Hello everyone and welcome by another video about my orchids and today uh, is the day for me to do a report on this uh, Ebanagara golden elf and I'm gonna show let you see why because it has starting new growing tips on the root uh, I'm sorry there as well a green tip and that one so for me that's a sign this orchid is ready to get repotted and for me that means that it's going to transition into self-watering setup and I thought it would be nice to make a video about the process and uh, especially because this orchid is very specially special special I'm sorry and um, yeah I'm kind of nervous to do a repot of this one because this is so special so very rare to get but uh, yeah, I thought it would be nice to do a uh, video sort of following up. I did an unboxing on this one uh, quite recently, so therefore I uh, thought it would be nice to follow this a little bit longer. And uh, today is the day, like I said, that it will be repotted in a self-watering system. So let's get the job done. So I hope you can uh, hear me. I'm a little bit further away from the camera and also the microphone. but. Uh, this is obviously my trash can and I like to do repots about this because I uh, can dump uh, the old media in it uh, quite easily and I also have this thing that I can sit on so it can take my time but I uh, now I'm going to get Argot out of the pot I really try to uh, avoid breaking those new roots we just saw so therefore I'm going to get it out quite carefully and uh, we will uh, see what we have in, the, in inside of this pot Doesn't smell very bad. It is a good sign, obviously. Try to let it let it fall off as naturally as it goes. I do see some, see some old roots, some uh, brown roots as well. It doesn't have a very good root system. It's also quite a small plant. But yeah, I think it uh, was in need for a uh, repot. So, slowly gonna move, remove the media from the from the root zone. And I try to avoid breaking any roots. Let's zoom in so we can have a better vision of what I'm doing here. Oops, that's zooming out. <clears throat> so you can see these roots are, uh, well, they are not completely mushy. They're not soft, but not the best roots. I think they had their best time, their best days. And we have some sphagnum moss, coconut husk, and bark. So we have three different medias, but that's okay. I'm gonna change the meat, yeah, completely as well. Anyhow, so it doesn't matter that much. Spagna mass plug in the middle. This is old. Old spagnum. That's not good. I'm trying to be very careful and very slowly here. Like I said, I don't want to damage any good roots. Because these roots are still viable. I can use them. They may shoot out, so whatever I like to keep them. Because this orchid doesn't have many roots yet, and because this one is so special, I try to do uh, it very carefully. I uh, yeah, I need to say to myself, just think of this as a regular plant. Just do the thing you always do. It works always. So, but yeah, this one is very special. So <laughs> I don't want to mess it up. I don't want to mess up any plant, of course. But the, you get the point. This one is uh, very hard to replace. If it was even possible, I, I, maybe, but it's going to be very, very hard. The plant is beautiful. It does look very good. It's beautiful, pseudo bulbs. And this is what I'm left with so far. I'm now going to take it under the tap and I will uh, be right back 
hopefully with a nice clean root system. So, and I uh, am back with our head. We had it under there and on the tab. I just try to wash off as many uh, old material as possible, potting materials. It's a little bit hard to get in between those roots, but there's a little uh, coconut husk left, and but it's okay, I'm gonna leave it. I did it before, it doesn't give me any troubles. But I, I did remove the sphagnum moss. I'm not happy with the sphagnum moss in the pot too long. This is just a little bit, like I said, coconut husk. I, the orchid should be fine. But now we have another close look at the roots and I'm going to cut off the ones that are uh, dead. Moosey, I think you call them. These are broken. And I hope the arc will, uh, will start to branch with those uh, roots. And I hope I stimulate that with uh, cutting off the old roots. What I did find was another growing root tip there. So we have one there and one there. So that's a good sign and I think in I saw another one that was a little one. I cannot find it anymore at this moment. But at least two are very visible, and like I said, there's another one somewhere down there. But yeah, some of these roots do look uh, old and tired, like this one, but it's still quite firm. So I'm gonna leave it on there because, like I said earlier, on, on this orchid doesn't have that many roots. So I try to work with every root that I can. This this is old. Cut it off. It's still okay. I think this is a growing root up. Yes, it is. Another one. So there are at least three that we can see. It isn't very green, but it's still growing up. And another one here starting. So yeah, this one is uh, really starting. Yes, the, another, the one that I missed earlier on is there. It's a very teeny tiny, so I don't think you can see it, but it's still there. So we have some root activity going on here. It's just starting, and that's beautiful, obviously. That is what I was waiting for for this one. I'm trying to, to play uh, safe with this one because, like I said, it's so special. Normally I can work around it, but for this one I really want those root tips before I... Uh, started doing a repot. What I do now is I get my hydrogen peroxide 3% and I'm gonna spray it quite quite firmly. If there are any snail eggs in there something like that I try to kill it off. And you may think well why did you first wash the roots and now you spray it with hydrogen because for example, like uh, Roger mentioned, you now dilute it again. Uh, yes, that is true, but I did it. I do this for years like this. I never ever had a problem. So therefore, I just keep doing this. This works for me, and like I said, I never had a problem with snails. But I need to get spray in between those pseudobulbs very well. Try to find the hiding spaces, and I use quite a lot of. Hydrogen peroxide, just to be safe. And I hear it uh, sissing, fussing, how do you call it? <laughs> but it's really uh, it's doing its job right now. So I'm gonna leave the target for uh, about a minute or th uh, three and I will come back. But I'm gonna put it aside for now and what I will show you I often forget to show it this is my other spray bottle I have alcohol in it and what I do is just I spray my scissors that I just used and let it dry off so I can use it 
again for another argument or probably for this one again but just to be the safe side on the safe side I never put my tools back before I uh, disinfect them it's very important it's a habit I uh, did get used to so I don't forget at least that's the plan <laughs> okay so I'm now gonna grab the putting mix and I will see you in a second so and we are back let's go me let's go over the the, the materials um, quick and briefly first of all this is going to be its new path I like the transparent one I like to watch the roots grow I did uh, cut a hole in this one because I need to this this uh, cable tie uh, on this spot so therefore I need a little hole and I'm going to put it on attached to this post like this and then I um, where is it here it is I'm going to cut this uh, loose end because I don't need that one so I'm going to cut it off and now I have sort of loop I think I could call it uh, attached to my pot and it is because let me demonstrate this quite quickly this pot goes quite deep into this uh, outer pot not too deep but deep enough it's if the plant is in there and it's n especially when they are not as stable it's kind of hard to get them out so therefore I like to use this cable tie so I can grab the table tie I'm sorry, cable tie and slowly just get the orchid out of the pot very easily and I can leave it, uh, put it in the pot quite easily as well. So therefore I use these kind of guys on, attached to my pot. So that is my little update on the cable tie. You will see me use this quite often. This is quite, I am doing this for the last six months now. And it, I really like it because, of, like I said, especially when orchids don't uh, have roots yet or they start to grow roots, uh, you don't want to move them too much. So therefore, this is uh, for me it's very handy. Then we have this water indicator, water meter, and it gets a minimum of water and a maximum of water. I don't use that uh, as uh, I should probably, but sometimes I water overwater them a little bit. It doesn't matter. It's just I it's, for me it's just to know that if some water is in the in the uh, reservoir or not so that's all but I uh, plan this in the pot before I start filling it up and my preferred uh, media at this moment really is the pumice and for the Cattleya types I use the big stuff and yeah they really like it they really like the touch to grab the roots onto something it's um, is very uh, useful to getting the moisture through the puff it really works well for me and uh, but also I keep uh, the air gaps in the pot so I fill up the first layer that is uh, in, in, in the reservoir because the old roots are not used to being wet all the time so I fill this up at least like this I have an amount of this. So this room is left for the roots. If it doesn't have as many roots or as long roots, I just fill it up until the roots touch the media. But this is the start for this orchid. So I now uh, grab my orchid and we will uh, transfer it into its new home. And I hope it will like this new home, of course. And like I said, I try to keep all the roots on there as, as many as I can. They may not take the self-watering setup. That is something that I uh, I know I keep in mind, but they may shoot out. I have some old roots who were adapted to, for example, bark, but they shoot out new roots, and the older roots may rot off, but the tissue of the root itself keeps um, intact. The the velamen may rot off, but it's the roots still function. So therefore, I like to keep them on there, and I think this is a nice position for my auger to start with. I try to I have it quite in the middle of the pot because I I think this is the new growth so probably we will get new shoots there but I'm not completely sure. I might get one in the back as well so therefore I keep some room there as well just 
just to be safe. I don't know this orchid that well, so I don't know its uh, growing habit. And now I'm just filling up the pot. Very slowly, I try not to break the root tips. Try to shake the pots sometimes to get it to get the pumice uh, into the pot better underneath the plant uh, between the roots, etc. Not shaking too hard, but just a bit to get, it to get some movement in there and it will uh, fall into place. And what I also <coughs> like to do is uh, when I shake, the, pull the arcot up a little bit. So it's, it's easier for the pumice to get underneath the arcot as well. If you have some room left, of course, to pull your arcot up. Stands now on its own. We got a little bit here. There, I don't like the this water meter is not completely straight, so I need definitely need to try to get it into place again. So that's better. A little bit of media there. Have some there. Okay, and I will uh, finish this with a top layer of gravel. I have that uh, next to me. I will grab some just to avoid a dry top layer. And as you may recognize this, but um, I get this idea from. Annabelle from the Arctic Room, and I really, really enjoy it. I really like it. It's such a great idea. It works really well for me as well. So therefore, I uh, introduced the gravel as well into my growing room, and I like the look of it. I really like it. I don't know why, but I like gravel, <laughs> just in general. So I think uh, we are done. I'm going to check it. Very carefully. Oh, I'm sorry. And this is how she is spotted up now. I think we uh, did, did great. I hope she will uh, agree <laughs> and start uh, um, of continuous growing those new new roots and hopefully start a few new ones as well. I don't think I need to stake this. I thought when I start maybe I need to st stake this one, but actually, yeah, I could stake this growth. This kind of big and heavy, as you can see, there's a little bit of movement there, so I'm going to stick it onto this water uh, meter. That's kind of handy. I do not need a separate uh, stake. I can use this as a stake as well. It will not look as beautiful, but it, I don't care at this moment because I want to make it as easy as possible for the orchid, and later I can uh, get the tie off. Uh, so let's grab me some uh, wire. I should have have some wire here. Yes, and I have this green one. It is not as visible if you have it on your arcus, I think. So therefore, I like it. Doesn't distract me when I watch my arcus. <laughs> okay, how shall we do this? Oh, I don't know. I think it's not long enough. Well, sh let's try. Okay. I'm gonna grab this bulb, yes, it's long enough. And I'm gonna push it a little bit and then I'm going to turn the wire, secure the wire like this. I don't want it too tight, but yes, this is better. 
it now supports the arc better and new growths can come out from here quite easily I have some room left there I hope you can see that so yeah this is uh, the repot so far so I can now put the orchid in its new spot and I'm gonna grab that cable wire slowly gonna remove I now ha hold this with one hand as you can see and slowly can yeah I need to uh, get it in the pot but I now slowly can uh, let go of this spot and put it into place and here you go what I also do um, let me show it to you guys for me personally it's very important I have here its name tag and I'm going to put the date on when I did a repot so I always know when this one started into uh, growing into a semi um, self-watering I'm sorry and I might add another date in maybe in a year or two years or three years when I do a up potting on this one but now I'm going to give it a date here and I'm going to uh, put it back on the shelf so oh, and there she is again I just uh, wanted to show you this I just personally like it very much but um, I don't know if you guys like it but you see there some happy sap I always enjoy happy sap looking at it it's such a beautiful thing if you ask me there it is well you probably see it in the corner just right behind that bloom but um, I don't know if it's that happy at this moment because of the repot but anyhow happy sap I just like it okay I'm going to zoom out now and I'm going to turn the camera slowly just downwards we have a few of the plant now how oh, it's now on the shelf again in the same place where it was and it looks like there's some stripe there but that's because um, a sort of reflection from the wood behind it because this is empty and I thought I would mention that probably you were uh, asking that um, watching this video why I didn't fill up the uh, the reservoir yet I normally uh, wait for a one to probably three days uh, max before I start uh, filling up this reservoir um, I'm not always doing that because I don't think every orchid needs it but because this uh, orchid had not that strong roots um, it probably uh, had some damage on it now because I uh, repotted it you also saw me some um, I cut off some art old parts of the root I didn't cut in the new tissue but I did cut in the old tissue so there is some damage uh, done there and just be on the safe side so I will give it a little bit of time to dry up and then we will start filling up the reservoir and um, I will start with only RO water and seaweed I will do that I will continue that doing as long as uh, it may take for me to see really see those roots going and starting off getting into this uh, new setup because the new roots now will not take up any uh, feet at all they need to grow and grow and grow so I have a few a little bit of time limit left with the old roots if you if that makes sense so what I want to get into this orchid now is especially hormones to get it happy and kind of happy semi happy at least um, comfort enough I should say to start uh, new roots and to, to, to keep growing those uh, new root tips as we saw so therefore I like to use the seaweed I did give this seaweed in the older setup uh, until I saw those new uh, root tips starting and that was for me a sign to repot it so to get them quicker in that uh, mode that spirit of making new roots I uh, like to use seaweed as well so I spray it on top of them uh, get it into those roots and it really helps it's most of the times it takes uh, a few days let's say three days to up to ten days something there and they will start making those roots 
most cases not always but most cases and this one did so therefore I uh, could uh, repot it now so that is it for now I think if you have any questions please uh, leave them in the comment section so I can answer them I uh, probably uh, can make some videos out of it if you have any questions but this is the uh, repotting of the Iwa uh, Vanagawa apple golden apple no <laughs> apple <laughs> Sorry, let's do that again. Ibanagara Apple Blossom Golden Elf. That is the name of this beautiful orchid. And uh, like I said, if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. I now would like to say thank you for watching and I really hope to see you at one of my next videos. Bye bye.